Good day, dear listeners. My name is Nikhil Alexandrov, and today I would like to talk about what makes people human. Specifically, I would highlight one specific criterion that, in my opinion, distinguishes people from any other species that have been known up to this time. Humans are social creatures that evolved to a level at which humans could self-organize to protect their rights and the rights of their species' representatives, regardless of their social position and social status. This is expressed in the creation of such organizations like the United Nations, UN, basically, the ECHR, European Court of Human Rights, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Also, operations of these organizations worldwide aimed at protecting the rights of human. In the modern world, there are many different out outrages, wars, terrorist attacks, robbing the poor, and so on. Basically, the world, world is not the nicest place ever. All of these qualities do not show humanity from a right side, but the fact that we are able to create organizations to protect the rights of our relative make people human. Every year, the participating countries of such organizations as the UN, OC, or OSCE, and ECHR donate millions to finance such companies, uh, such organizations, I mean, which try to make the world a better place or at least make it more you know, nutritious and worthy. Well, coming to the point, the United Nations is an organization created immediately after, after the end of the World War II. And uh, uh, what was the main purpose of this organization is to maintain international peace and security, prevent and eliminate threats to peace, and suppress acts of aggression. Uh, also, uh, this is basically defending human rights, uh, like basically taking the, probably the most important human right is uh, the right to live. Though all this protection was provided without paying attention, without distinction as to race, sex, language or religion. Well, for example, here the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by the General Assembly in 1948, proclaims the fundamental rights and freedoms enjoyed by all men and women, including their right to live, liberty and citizenship, the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion, right to work, education, food and housing, and the right to participate in government. For many centuries, humanity has been exterminating itself in bloody wars, but we have able to transcend the basic instincts, basic instincts aimed to the survival of only themselves or their comrades. People have been able to unite to ensure a common order. The UN regularly organizes peacekeeping operations aimed at preserving peace in society and protecting human rights. Like, for example, Kosovo in 1999, Bosnia and Herzegovina from 1992 to 1995, Lebanon for already probably more than 40 years, Kyber, like, uh, Kyber squeezes in 1964, uh, Congo in 1960 till 1964, and so on. In 1989, the Convention on the Rights of Children was adopted, which includes 54 paragraphs. I'll quote part of this preface, uh, preface of like, these paragraphs. Recognizing that the child, for the full and harmonious development of his or her personality, should grow up in a family environment in an atmosphere of happiness, love, and understanding. This shows the understanding and resp responsibility of society for its so far independent and defenseless participants. Well, uh, I don't know, should I cite anything, but just in case, UNICEF 1989. The UN is one of the three largest organizations in the world that is engaged in maintaining order in society and helping developing countries with the money of already developed countries, which can probably be considered a kind of sacrificial charity and an accurate perception of the world. I want to pay greater attention to moments with children. In the book Soul to the Sea, the author, uh, Road to Safety, at the very beginning indicates the moment when the Soviet soldiers clearly intend to harm a Polish teenage girl, probably rape her, well, uh, it was not stated in the book, but we know that he wasn't planning to do anything good with her. And here, here is a quote. He lodged the gun under the bone of my chin. You know, in peaceful time, child abuse was not frequent, but the inherent phenomenon, like it took place from time to time, but in a war time. All the dirt of the human soul was shown to the light. Only common sense and some local laws that were not widespread worldwide guaranteed the safety of people and ch children in particular. Now every person lives knowing that they are protected. Well, animals live according to their laws of nature. They kill out of necessity, not desire, but their rabbit can never be sure of their baby rabbit's safety. Of course, a human mother also, can, also cannot be for 100% be sure that her child would not be harmed by anyone. But you know, understanding that large organizations watch these rights, rights to live and so on, observance somehow gives a sense of security. No one is protected from death, but everyone has the right to live. It is the existence of organizations like the UN that gives people hope and faith that their rights will be protected. Military conflicts would be ended and destroyed countries will be rebuilt. Well, coming to the second thing is the European Court of Human Rights, which was founded in 1959, and the main purpose of its creation and functioning of its ensure respect for the rights and freedoms of individuals and organizations enshrined in the Convention of the Protection of Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Well, the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms was adopted in 1950s and is the main legal document for all countries of the Council of Europe. 
Well, <clears throat> uh, this is not really uh, not, not really just simple uh, court. This is like something you know the largest, the hugest system. This is like the last place where you can go. Though actually, uh, you cannot go to the court where like uh, you can. Um, uh, you know, uh, try to protect yourself from another person. This is like, you know, this is for relations between a person and government. Like, for example, if you if you think that your human rights were like harmed by some government, then you can technically go to the court. Well, the Euro European Court of Human Rights serves as the basis for the protection of human rights in 47 member states of the Council of Europe, where you know, where more than 800 people, uh, 800 million people live. Well, uh, as rightly see, stated in the book A Europe of Right. The ACHR does not process, uh, possess, possesses constitutional status and ranks below the constitution. It quickly became an important source of reference in interpreting the right and freedoms recognized by the constitution. This court has gained a lot of power since, uh, its, uh, since its foundation, which can give people a guarantee that if a state party like to the convention infringes on the rights to live of people, they will be able to protect themselves at least in some way. As I've already said, against individuals, the court does not accept any applications. Well, in Ruta Safety's book, uh, which I've mentioned before, Salt to the Sea, there's a right phrase describing the war. War is a catastrophe. It breaks families in irretrievable pieces. Unfortunately, even now, no international organization can prevent conflicts. Their existence confirms the attempts of humanity to avoid disasters, to bring everything to the level of legalized and official communication. Well, a clear example of this is the complaints to the GCHR about Ukraine in connection with the military conflict in the Donbass and Russia in connection with the annexation of Crimea. Another quote describes how war often look is killers are not always assassins. assassins. Sometimes they don't even have blood on their hands, and exactly the existence of such organizations like ACHR can bring justice and more objective assessments on the actions of conflicting countries so that even those hands are not covered in blood, are punished. Like, I mean, people who are not actually fighting, they're like manipulating, they're sending armies, and like, uh, this place, like ECHR, is technically like, they're the ones who can punish those people who are leading all of these armies and pushing these people to kill each other. The presence of organizations that can be contacted when human rights are infringed, that the state clearly distinguishes people from animals who do not have this opportunity and survive, fighting each for their lives. Like, no one can go like, and complain to the uh, king, or like not the king, the court of the forest that their rights were violated, but people technically can do that. So OCSE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the world's largest re regional organization in, is dealing with security issues. It unites 57 countries located in North America, Europe and Central Asia. Well, to simplify, this organization primarily sets itself the task of fighting for the most essential human right, the right to live. This is reflected in the prevention of conflicts in the region, the settlement of crises, and eliminating the consequences of conflicts. So, to be more specific, arms from like uh, this is like uh, arm distribu distribution control, establishing like diplomatic uh, communication, and like measures are being taken to build trust and security. Uh, here's one of the resolutions of the report of the work of the OSCE uh, in, Central, in Central Asia. The Oshfield office focused on a number of human rights issues related to conditions in detention, trafficking in human beings, gender equality, promoting human rights through education. This in turn confirms the organization's goal and shows that these goals will be achieved by human methods, emphasizing the need of, for a right-based approach to the protection of human rights. Another evidence of the peaceful intervention of the Oh my god, <laughs> OSCE in military conflicts is observed in the resolution of the situation in Georgia for 2008. The main achievement of this forum has been Russia's decision to withdraw its military troops from Turkey. Probably, if these organizations had existed earlier, humanity would have avoided a large number of bloody wars, or at least the duration would have been shorted of these wars, of course. In war, every extra day is hell. It is difficult to underestimate the work of the OSCE. As even how many conflicts were pre-resolved in Central Asia alone. For people in the world, the clock is ticking, and even the simplest wishes are often impossible. Here, one, here is the one more quote. I wanted the war to be over so I could ask her out. A simple wish, which is just reckless during the war. And this is a part of the human right, the right to start a family, basically. This example is a grain of an example of what war deprives people of what rights they cannot normally use during the conflict. The war conflict, of course. The, o the OSCE is one of the organizations whose mission is to protect people's rights and give them a peaceful life. Animals are deprived of this opportunity. Though within the tribes, animals can technically support each other, still no third party will interfere in the conflict without, pro without profit, but only to calm the two clashing packs. Well, people are similar to animals in many ways. Our life activities, in many ways, it is almost no different from, the, uh, from theirs. Like, we eat, we sleep, we do our stuff to survive. However, however, we try to make the world a better place. We try to eat for free, 
without regard to skin color, gender, age, and so on. We create such organizations as the UN, OSCE, and the ECHR. Do they work fully? And is the world a better place? Yes, it is technically a better place, but still. Humanity continues to violate human rights and destroy itself, which means that the system doesn't work correctly. That all of these organizations are far from perfect. Then the question arises whether all this makes sense, and I believe that yes. Humanity can't completely eradicate the bloodlust inherent in it, but it can at least try. That's why I think trying to make the world a better place by creating international organizations to protect human rights actually makes people human. Thank you so much for listening.